Hello, hello everybody. God bless you. God bless you wherever you are. Um, yes, yeah, so it's just time of prayer. Just want us to join me this evening um, just to pray and worship. So please just let me know where you're watching from. Um, that would be amazing. And uh, please share this video as well. Uh, many of you, as many of you would know, maybe you don't know, but um, our PM um, for the United Kingdom, um, that's uh, Boris Johnson right now, has been admitted to intensive care. So basically, he's in intensive care for this COVID virus thing. Um, we need to pray for him. And the church prays, and I feel like the scripture the Lord has given me, I'm going to read that in a minute. Um, the scripture the Lord has given me is uh, from Acts of the Apostles. You know, remember when um, James was killed, the Apostle James was killed. And the Bible says in the next verse in chapter 5, and when Peter was captured as well and was going to be killed, but the Bible says, and the church prayed and his life was spared. Hallelujah. Hey, George, how's it going? Bless you, man. It's been a long time. So I feel in my spirit that we need to pray for our PM. And this is not a joke. It's not a publicity stunt. This is just, listen, we need to pray because... The devil is, is, is out to do stuff, but we can stop him because we have the church and we've got authority in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. But yeah, I just want to encourage us. Please let us pray for our PM. Um, if you don't even live in the UK, please do join us in prayer as well. As long as you're a believer, uh, we would love for you to pray with us. Hallelujah. Pray with us in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. Uh, we thank you for this awesome time. Thank you for this um, amazing opportunity for us to gather together as a church to pray for our pm to pray for the various needs that we may have i know obviously you may have needs in your life as well and um, we'll, if you have a need if you have someone else to pray specifically about maybe you have someone that's sick um in your house or someone you know that is sick just put their name down if you can if you can't just you know write a comment or something uh, let us know so we can pray for them as well i just want to just uh, share uh, kind of a scripture that i was thinking about today before this kind of uh, the thought of the prayer for PM kind of dropped in my spirit that we should do this today. And this scripture is from Acts chapter 12 and from verse 1 down to 5, 6, and 7. The Bible says, And at that about that time Herod the king laid violent hands on some who belonged to the church. He killed James, the brother of John, with a sword. And when he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded to arrest Peter also. This was during the days of unleavened bread. But when he had seized him, he put him in prison, delivering him over to four squads of soldiers to guard him, intending after the Passover to bring him out to the people. So Peter was kept in prison, but earnest, now this is where I'm going. It says, the Bible says, but earnest prayer for him was made to God by the church. Hallelujah. Now, what was the result of that prayer? Now, listen to what happened here. Look at the background of this story. The Bible says one of the key apostles, remember that three key apostles of Jesus was Peter, James, and John. Three key apostles of all the two of these three key guys. The Bible says Herod took one of them. It was James. And he killed James. So what, what was the church doing when he captured James, when he took James? What was the church doing? They probably thought it was just business. Ah, don't worry, it's going to be released the next day. Oh, it's okay, it's fine. But in the in, in right before them, Herod killed James. Now, when he killed James, they realized, oh, something is happening here. We need to get serious. While they were still contemplating where about what happened to James, the Bible says when Herod saw that this thing that he did pleased the Jews, he proceeded to take Peter also. What was he going to do? He was going to kill Peter as well. That's when the church realized that, listen, this is serious. We cannot keep looking while our, our brethren are being killed or while the, 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 the apostles are being killed. And the Bible says, what happened? Verse 6, verse 5 says, I said, but, but earnest prayer for him was made to God by the church. And that's where I'm going. Believers, listen, we've got serious power within us that we don't even realize. Many of us don't even understand the, the power of God that is at work within us. Scripture says Christ in us, the hope of glory. Bible makes us understand that the same power, the same authority that Jesus had when he was on the earth, we as a church have that same power, that same authority at work within us. Verse 6 says, And now when Herod was about to bring him out, on, the, on that, says, when Herod was about to bring him out, so the next day they was going to bring him out to kill him, it says, On that very night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound by two chains, and sentries before the door were guarding the, guarding the prison. 
and behold, an angel of the Lord stood next to him, and a light shone in his cell. And he struck Peter on the side and woke him and saying, get up quickly. And the chains fell off his hands. <laughs> the angels didn't even need to, there was no key. The chain just fell off. And he did so. And the Bible says, and the chains fell off. And the angel said to him, dress yourself and put on your sandals. And he did so. And he said to him, wrap your cloak around you and follow me. And he went out and followed him. And he did not know that what was being done by the angel was real, but thought that he was seeing a vision. When they had passed the first and the second guard, they came to the iron gate leading to the city. Scripture says it opened for them of its own accord. And they went out and went along one street and immediately the angel left him. When Peter came to himself, he, he, he said, Now I am sure that the Lord has sent his angel and rescued me from the hand of Herod and from all that the Jewish people were expecting. Hallelujah. Just because one man, the church began to pray for Peter, God sent an angel to intervene and save Peter. The question I want to ask is this, God forbid, what if the church had not prayed? What if the church has thought, maybe, this, maybe Herod was going to change his mind. Maybe Herod was going to maybe wake up on the, wrong, the right side of the bed and say, well, you know what? I think I'm being too harsh on these church people. Let me just let them go and let uh, um, you know, Peter go. What would have happened if the church did not pray? God forbid, but thank God we don't re we don't find we didn't find that out. But the church, the Bible says, Scripture says the church prayed, and um, Peter was released. Hallelujah. So what am I trying to sound like? I want us to pray today specifically for our PM, our Prime Minister of, of the United Kingdom. He's currently sick in hospitals, been put in intensive care. We know people that have been that have died actually from the coronavirus. So we're not talking about this. This is not a, well, not a joke. It's a life and death matter. We're trying to pray. And intercede on his behalf. One of the things the church does is prayer and intercession. Prayer is where we bring our own personal needs, our own petitions to the Lord, but we can also intercede for, on behalf of someone else. So that's what we want to do today. We want to intercede. The Bible says prayers and intercession with thanksgiving is what one of the things that we're supposed to do as a church is make intercession for the saints. We're supposed to make intercession for our leaders as well. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I want to read the scripture. A second scripture for us is 1 Timothy 2 verse 1 says, First of all, I urge that supplications, listen, this is what we're supposed to be doing as a church, supplications, prayers, and intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings and for all who are in positions that we may lead a peaceful and quiet and godly life and dignified in every way. This is good and it's pleasing in the sight of our God, our Savior, who desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of his truth. Hallelujah. So the Bible says, us praying for our leaders, us praying for our prime minister is good in God's sight. So let us lift up our voice right now. You and I begin to intercede on his, on, on his behalf. Let's pray for his healing. Let's pray that his body recovers. Let's rebuke that sickness and disease from his body right now, Father, in Jesus' name. Just begin to pray wherever you are. Begin to intercede. This is not, it's not to watch me pray. No, it's to actually you pray as well. I want you to intercede right now. Begin to intercede on his behalf. As a church, let us begin to pray for the prime minister. One thing happens when you begin to pray for somebody else. Listen, God begins to take care of your own needs as well. This is the key. One of the keys to breakthrough is to pray for somebody else. Do for somebody else what you want God to do for you. And when you begin to pray for somebody else, you're no longer being selfish or thinking about just yourself, but you're praying and, and interceding on behalf of somebody else. Guess what? God will begin to move on your own behalf. Hallelujah. So Father, right now, we just want to pray and intercede on behalf of Boris Johnson. We lift him up before you and we pray and decree his healing in Jesus' name. Right now, we're not just asking God to heal him. We're going to decree and declare that he's healed in Jesus. And the Bible says when you decree a thing, it shall be established unto you. As a church, we have power and authority to decree a thing on the earth. And the Bible says where two of, two of us, you and I, on earth shall agree as concerning anything we shall speak or agree about. Scripture says it shall be done for us by our Father who is in heaven. So right now, please join your faith with mine. Let us agree for the healing of Boris Johnson in Jesus' name. Begin to pray for him. Begin to intercede on his behalf. Begin to pray that God God's healing virtue come upon him right now. Father, we lift up bodies before you. We command the sickness and disease. We curse that coronavirus.
coronavirus. We command it to die from its roots right now in Jesus' name. We speak healing over him right now. We command healing and health over Boris right now in Jesus' name. We command your body to be going to respond to the word. We're going to command your body to respond to healing right now in Jesus' mighty name. We just speak life. We speak life over you. We speak life over you. We speak life in Jesus' name. We declare, declare that you shall live and not die in Jesus' name right now. As a church, we stand upon the authority of the word that says, by his stripes you were healed 2,000 years ago. So right now, we take that authority in the name of Jesus. We break the hedge. The Bible says we, we, we just break the power of darkness right now. The Bible says, behold, I give you power and authority to trample upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Right now, we trample upon the sickness. We command it to leave his body in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we declare healing and health over Boris right now. In Jesus' mighty name, we say he's healed. We decree from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. We command healing right now. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father. And also, if you know someone that's sick, if you maybe if you've got a prayer request right now, we're going to stop by 9.30. But if you have a prayer request as well, please put it down on the chat. Let's pray for you as well. If you know anyone that is sick, anyone that has issues with this coronavirus, we just begin to pray and intercede on their behalf. Right now, Father, we pray for those who may be sick, those who may be going through um, whatever challenge they may be going through right now in their bodies, either by coronavirus or whatever sickness or disease that have been influenced or affected at this season. Right now, we, we, we curse that infirmity. We command it to leave their bodies in Jesus' name. We speak life. We speak healing. We speak health. Over them right now in Jesus name, we decree and declare that Boris is healed in Jesus name. We decree and declare that he's healed from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. We pray for everyone else that may be suffering or being sick right now in their bodies by this coronavirus or whatever sickness or disease in their body right now. We speak life. We speak healing and health over them right now in Jesus name. Father in Jesus we thank you in Jesus mighty name. And also, if you, you know people who have lost their jobs this season, you know people who are going through challenges, through financial difficulties, who are facing so much, so much difficulty right now in this season, begin to pray for them as well. Father, right now we pray for those who may be going through uh, financial challenges, those who may be, well, maybe have lost their jobs. Father, we pray because we know, Lord, that you are the God of provision. The Bible says, our God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. So, Father, right now we lift up every need. We lift up every family before you right now that are seeking you, that are asking for provision. Father, let help come. Lord, we pray, Father, dispatch help in Jesus' name. We pray, Father, every need be met in Jesus' name, Father. We decree and declare that, Father God, no one shall grow hungry. None shall beg bread. The Bible says, since I was young and I'm old, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his descendant beg for bread. But, Father, right now we decree that none shall go hungry, none shall lack. There shall be no lack amongst them in Jesus' name. Father, we just pray for every Every need right now we say those needs be met in Jesus mighty name father we thank you we bless your name father for provision we thank you father God that you would supply every need father in Jesus mighty name Lord we thank you we pray father for the that Lord even as the church arises in this hour we pray for our communities we pray for those who may be going through depression or oppression or just feeling hopeless and just feeling lonely in this season because they have nobody to talk to or nobody to visit them or something so father right now we pray for people in those situations in the, who have been depressed who have been oppressed in whatever way shape or form the father god we rebuke that spirit of depression in jesus name we just speak we just speak peace and joy over them right now in jesus name father we pray that somebody will call that will have connections that their friends and family will begin to just maybe give them a call or something if god lays somebody in your heart right now even as you're praying that you need to call please do give them a call send them a text send them a message just do whatever just connect with somebody in this season we may be alone but we're not lonely we may just be by ourselves but we're not alone we're not by ourselves but we are connected and we can just stay connected by, by call, call somebody facetime somebody send them a text message whatever we can do to connect to one another let's keep community going this season let's look out for one another just call somebody and find out how they're doing because you don't know what's happening and maybe God lays somebody in your heart. Please do call them. You just might be one person that would call and save somebody from committing suicide. It's that important. So please don't, don't just dismiss those nudges in your heart to speak to somebody or to call or pick up the phone and call somebody in this season. So let's pray for one another. Let's continue to encourage ourselves in this season. Let's continue to look out for one another. And maybe you've lost your job or maybe you're going through a challenge. Listen, it's not the end. That's not the end of the story because God has got great plans for you. Maybe it's a time for you to just upskill yourself. Now you have free time in your hand, 
Take a course online. Go to there's open university. There's something you know you can build your skills. You go on YouTube, learn something. You know, find out something else that you can do. Or maybe just ask the Lord and say, Lord, what would you have me do in this season? What can I do? Because listen, there's so many things that you can actually do right now to even just you know to come to get by to make ends meet. There's so many things you can actually do even from home. There's so many things you can actually still do. So don't feel dejected find out something go search books read resources go on youtube go on google just search how can you you know make money online or something whatever i need to do just do something skill yourself maybe you need to take a course maybe you need to do uh um, an online training or something like that just find something you need to do this season don't spend no time binge watching netflix i think it's a waste of time if you're going to do that this season spend more time in the presence of god spend more time praying if you, if you can fast, do fast as well. You know, if you can spend time praying, read the word. Just spend more time in God's presence. Spend more time developing yourself. Put your, update your CV. Um, do, do something productive. And let's not just waste time watching Netflix all day. It's not going to help us. So I pray this encourages you. Please share this message or share this video with somebody else. And uh, if you have a prayer request, you want us to pray for you, you want us to pray with you, please send me a private message or just put the message um, up below this uh, this video and I will pick it up and pray for you. I'm going to pray for you tonight as well. Uh, before I go to bed, I'm going to pray as well, just spending more time in God's presence. So um, I hope this blesses and encourages you. Just know that God loves you so much. You are precious in His sight. He will supply your every need. There's no need to fear. There's nothing to worry about. Just trust in God. Put your hope and confidence and trust in the Lord. And He will sustain you in Jesus' name. God will supply your need. No need to worry. No need to fear in Jesus' name. So God bless you. Have a wonderful night wherever you are. And take care. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless.